After the beautiful trip to Antarctica, a small group of us photographers headed towards Torres del Paine National Park in Chile, where we encountered both moody skies and some of the most beautiful sunrises I've ever seen. So good morning from legendary Torres del Paine National Park in Patagonia. I'm finally here. Like, I do not know for how many years I have seen photos from this beautiful mountain range here in the background <laughs> and I'm here <laughs> I can't believe it so obviously we have gone to probably one of the most obvious places to photograph the mountain range here on the first morning so I have this boardwalk here in the foreground and I have some view here in the background with some islands and some small inlets and lagoons which looks really nice as a foreground towards the mountains. The morning has started out somewhat good. We have epic, beautiful red light and colors, but obviously in the very wrong direction relative to the mountains. I do think I managed to capture a little bit of that color in the clouds just a little bit ago, but it is hard because I am battling also a lot of wind and having the tripod on this boardwalk, I have to like shield the entire camera setup with my body. For this specific photo, 28 to 200 millimeter, zooming a little bit in beyond 35 millimeter. And I'm also putting on my 16 to 35 millimeter to capture the entire vista. I'm taking one photo for the background and one photo for the foreground to have both in focus. Besides the boardwalk shot, I also headed down to this location here to get a more classic vista photo. I implemented some foregrounds and did some focus stacking and got a moody photo of the mountains that I actually really like. I do quite like the moody photos I got this morning, but later on this trip we got some absolutely epic light. If you saw my Instagram stories from when I was on location, you know what I'm talking about. Be sure to stay around to watch that. You remember that? Forest. The deep dark forest. How do you deal with all this mainstream photography? Jesus Christ, that was a deep question. Ooh, <laughs> I... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> After this moody sunrise, we headed a bit down the road for a cup of coffee. Look at Nigel being a real influencer here. <laughs> we found that this area is actually really good to photograph the mountains from. There were plenty of foreground possibilities to build up a photo and a chance to chill a bit. It's good. There we go. Look at these wildlife photographers shooting the birds. And then this rig. <laughs> So we've just stopped by the road and there's a lot of like dead, beautiful old trees in this area. And it's one of the things that we really wanted to photograph while here. The big beautiful mountains here in the background and then some dead trees in the foreground. And that's generally, especially what we're doing today is to just drive around in the park, get an idea about the lay of the landscape 
and then find some kind of foreground and have the mountains in the background. We use trees to frame the mountains. We use pools in the front to make reflections. We have people standing in the foreground. All these things with the epic backdrop. As you can see here, it's actually a very beautiful tree and I'm trying to place it optimally relative to the background mountains here. And then I'm going to have a low angle so that I bring in some of the grass here. The only hard part is how low or how high should I keep the camera. And of course, the aperture is a little bit hard to find optimally. I'm shooting at f16 and that should be enough to somehow get the foreground tree and the mountains in the background in focus. And then I have the foreground grass a little bit out of focus. But generally, today is very much about the mountains and maybe some kind of foreground to frame the mountains, reflections to give order, small people to create a sense of scale, and all the things I talk about in my ebooks on composition. So if you want to learn more about that, there are links to both of them down in the description of this video. Composition is just one of the most important parts of a photo and it completely makes or breaks the photo if you do not get a proper composition. And you can see as I just move the camera up and down here, the perspective completely change relative to the background mountains. Good morning, I'm just outside our hotel, which is this beautiful hotel, Rio Serrano and Spa Hotel, here in Patagonia. And it has just, well, it hasn't exactly exploded yet. The sun is coming up now, and I'm just walking among these beautiful trees, as you can see here, I have some reflections that I may be able to use with some of these colors here in the background. The trees in this area is just beautiful. After our very, very long drive up here, we've seen so many of these very characteristic, very wind-blown trees. And the drive was really long. So it was nice getting to a proper hotel. And it has spa and it has a really great bar. The restaurant food is phenomenal. It's really good. Now we have eaten there a few times and wow. <laughs> If you do come down here and you can stay just outside the entrance of the park, definitely go to Rio Serrano. It's a beautiful place, nice staff, clean rooms, really great service, especially for us photographers. So we have this really cool waitress who comes and asks when we want to eat. And when we say eight, she's like, are you sure? Because my experience with landscape photographers is that they are always late. So maybe we should say 8.30 or 9. <laughs> That's quite funny. <laughs> So yeah, definitely really, really nice hotel. So I found a composition right here where I have a foreground tree and then a background tree and then I have beautiful lit up colors of the clouds in the background. So I have put my camera up here, then I use the reflection right there and then I use this branch right there to make like a frame around the background tree. I'm focusing just down here, trying to find the hyperfocal distance, shooting at f16. And in that way, I can avoid focus stacking this shot here, and I just get everything in my frame at once. So ISO 100, I'm underexposing a little bit as to not blow the color channels. f16 gives me a shutter speed of one third of a second, and therefore I have the tripod. The very best part of this hotel is definitely the view. The view is insane. You just have like this big panoramic view of the mountains and they look phenomenal, especially on a morning like this right here. Like, oh wow. It's just so painterly. It's like moody, light coming in and yeah, makes for great panoramas from this area right here. Absolutely epic. <laughs>
many locations to visit in Torres del Paine, but due to limited time as we lost a couple of days because of delays from the Antarctica trip, general tiredness in the group and a priority of locations from where we could photograph the mountains, we skipped the famous glacier and the strenuous hike to the Horns. We did go on another famous hike in front of the mountains, which was incredibly windy, and I think that's where the stories of the infamous winds come from. However, because Torres del Paine National Park has implemented some incredibly restrictive rules on this hike, where you're not allowed to leave the hiking trail, and they've closed off most of the access to the black beaches, the dead trees, and waterfalls, which made it nearly impossible to work as a landscape photographer. This specific hike was meant to be a scouting for a potential sunrise, but due to all these limitations, we all anonymously agreed that there was no reason to waste time on that. Despite the restrictions, I did come away with a few photos, but nothing compared to the potential of the area that I have seen from other landscape photographers before the restrictions for this hike were implemented. So I've come back to the place where we were on the first morning, but from a little bit lower angle down among the trees, down by the lake, the light has just started popping. The clouds were so low, we were very much in doubt whether or not any kind of light would happen, but we knew that a little bit of the horizon would be free, so it wouldn't happen before around sunrise, and now it is popping a little bit, getting beautiful pinkish colors, absolutely gorgeous not a whole lot it could be more as you will see in the next segment here because i got really nice colors a few days ago but i will put that in the end part of this video because that was just phenomenal but for now this here is also <laughs> really really beautiful so right now i'm working on a composition where i'm bringing in this tree here and as you can see colors in the mountains and then I have this composition right here. Hopefully I can get a little bit of the reflection right there in the lake. I quite like that. It's not a whole lot, but uh, I'll take what I can get. Beautiful colors. From a settings point of view, I'm taking one photo at F16 for the background and the mountains, and then one at F16 for the foreground tree here. I think that works, that, that ought to work well. If you want to know how I edit my photos, be sure to enroll in my big Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. It is here where I show all my different techniques for landscape photography editing. In this course, I cover focus stacking, how to clean your photos properly, how to use luminosity masking, how to dodge and burn efficiently, how to edit moody photos, how to edit epic sunsets and sunrises, and I cover how to do some advanced blending. Right now, you can get $100 off on this big course but it's only for a limited time the coupon code is down in the description of this video so that light lasted for like five minutes tops <laughs> that was so fast i do think i managed to get a few photos there you just have to be honest you just have to try to nail that composition immediately as light like that happens you need to know what you're doing and yeah well as I've already said, my ebooks are down in the description. Next thing, 
on the menu. You like it, Adam? Oh, yeah. No, it's good. It's really good. Perfect. Oh. I didn't really get much. I'm like, I got a picture of a mountain with light on it. Oi, another one. <laughs> Did you get the trees? Yeah. At all. Oh yeah, focus stacked and ready and go and yeah. I just need to go and do a bit of a video by a tree because I just gotta do it. On the second morning of the trip where we got the best of the best light, the group had decided to split. James went to take photos of road signs, while Adam, Nigel and Rhiannon went to another location as they didn't want a repeat of the first morning. However, I really wanted the reflections of the mountains and the lakes, so that was my priority and Jerome and Rick joined me. So we have come back to the location that we were at the very first morning. I was a little bit bummed out that I did not manage to get the reflection in the lake just here in front, but I really, really liked it. And as you can see right now, it is just kicking off. <laughs> wow, some light. Now, right now, sadly, the reflection isn't particularly good either, which is a super bummer. I have managed to get the reflection in some of the photos just before, as you can see right here, just before the light kicked off. So I am hoping that the wind will calm down enough so I can get it with this beautiful, beautiful light. I really like the scene. There's, there's something Jurassic to it. And I'm just waiting for T-Rex to like walk down here. To get this shot, I need to do a focus stack. So one shot for the background here. Then I'm taking one shot for down here too. One for this bush here and then here and here. So I will need to use three or four individual exposures to get this properly exposed. But wow, right now the light is just Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Wow. Holy moly. <laughs> so I just ran up because I didn't really get that reflection. So I went back to the boardwalk that I also photographed the force first morning. And it is kicking off. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Just look at this. So again, photographing here. And then I'm getting just like focus stacked off the boardwalk. This is so, so good. Oh, wow, 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 wow. After I had got my boardwalk shots, I went down to the reflection shot again. And luckily the wind had died down and I managed to get one of my favorite landscape photos of all time. The stoic Icelandic guy sitting here. How was that? That was epic. That was epic. That was really epic. So holy moly, what a morning. The good light lasted for like 15 minutes. Managed to get all the shots that I wanted. Kaboom. <laughs> here are some photos. How did you do, Nigel? I might have made a few mistakes. Wrong place, wrong time. Could you do, did, could you do, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> well, the light wasn't great though, was it? No, it was, it was garbage. Garbage light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I failed big time. It happens to the best of us. Yeah. It does.
All the time. Nigel and I always have some small competitions running, and even though we travel together, we often end up on different places, although photographing around the same location. As friends and colleagues, we support each other immensely, and we of course don't mind a good laugh when one of us makes a wrong decision and screws up. I do in fact know that Nigel actually came away with a pretty decent photo from this morning, so it wasn't as bad as he made it out to be. Be sure to visit his channel too, along with James, Jerome, Rick and Adam, who also all have YouTube channels. I've left links to them down below. There is no doubt that Torres del Paine was an epic location and I think we got more than what we had hoped for on these few days. If you travel all the way from Europe to visit Patagonia, I'd recommend to also go to El Chalten and the famous Mount Fitzroy. If you want to learn more, be sure to benefit from my spring sale on my course and get my ebooks on composition. See you next time.